the Tabernacle Baptist Church of Roanoke, Texas. We're so glad you're joining with us this time. Our prayer is that the message will be a blessing to you. I trust and pray that if you've never trusted Christ as personal Savior, today you would give careful consideration as the message is presented to accept Jesus Christ as personal Savior. The Bible affirms to us that in order to go to heaven, Christ is the only way. He himself said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. As a believer, we hope that you'll be encouraged, that you'll find that joy in the salvation that God has presented to you, and that if your life is not in line with Christ, that you will rededicate your life today. If you have your Bibles, we invite you to turn to two passages of Scripture. The first one, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18. And the second one, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8. We've entitled the message today, The Cross, The Power of God. Heavenly Father, as we approach the Holy Word, we ask for the anointing of thy spirit, that the message might bring honor and glory to you and lift up Christ and bring to that saving knowledge those that are unsaved, encourage those that are saved, and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse number 18, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. What a powerful statement. Look at it again. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved... It's the power of God. Then in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man. You see Christ took upon him the flesh of man in his incarnation. He became man. Fully man. He humbled himself and being obedient unto death even the death of the cross. Now as we study the word of God, we find that the heart of God's plan of salvation is the cross. And the cross is where the Bible tells us that Christ secured that salvation God had planned and purpose for those that will repent and trust Him. You see, the heart of Christianity is the Bible. The heart of the Bible is Christ and Him crucified. And the heart of Christ and Him crucified is the heart of God. And therefore we understand that the cross is the power of God. I want us to observe some things as we look at the cross today. First of all, we see the power of the cross. Hebrews 9, 22. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood is no remission. It plainly states there that for the offering to be accepted in order to pay the sin debt, had to be a perfect blood offering. And the only one that had the perfect blood that could offer it upon the cross was Jesus Christ. Now the law was given to inform us of the condition we're in. That condition is we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. But God not willing that any should perish, but they should all come to repentance. The Bible said God commanded his love toward us, and while we were yet sinners, 
Christ died for us. Therefore, the power of the salvation that God has provided is in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. You see, the Bible says, without the shedding of blood. You see, at the cross, propitiation was made. Now, propitiation is the work of Christ satisfying all claims of divine holiness, righteousness, and justice by which God is free to act in behalf of sinners. In other, in other words, the offering of Christ on the cross is that offering that is acceptable of God for the full payment of sin confessed. The Bible tells us also it's the love of God that sent Christ Jesus to be that atoning sacrifice for sin. 1 John 4, 9 through 10. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us. Now think about it. It was the proof of God's love. It was the proof of God's love. Because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Here in His love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. You see, at the cross, redemption was complete. Jesus stated such what He said from the cross, it is finished. Redemption has reference to being set free by the payment of a price demanded by the Holy God for the deliverance of the sinner from the bondage and burden of sin, which Christ completely satisfied. It carries the idea of a price paid or to buy to redeem out of the marketplace of sin. And therefore it was necessary because the lost have no righteousness and they cannot redeem themselves of which all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and there's none righteous. But at the cross, complete forgiveness was obtained. <clears throat> Ephesians 1, 7. In whom we have redemption through the blood. Present tense. Present tense. The moment that we repent and we ask God to forgive us and ask Christ to save us, the Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. So the moment that faith is placed in the finished work of Christ, His death, His burial, and His resurrection, immediately in that moment, redemption has been provided because of the shedding of His blood. The forgiveness of sin according to the riches of His grace. You see, at the cross, peace is found. At the cross, fellowship with God is regained of that which Adam forfeited when he disobeyed God in the garden. At the cross, liberty is given through the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to become that image of Christ and satisfy the Father. Oh, listen to me. Also, the Bible tells us that we need to understand the purpose of the cross is to provide the only means of salvation. 
the only means of salvation. Jesus emphatically stated that when he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Therefore, what a statement we read in our text in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Oh, what a price to pay when you minimize the cross because the way of the cross leads home. There's no other way to go to heaven without having your start on that journey at the cross. And that's coming to accept Jesus Christ as personal Savior based upon the finished work that he completed at the resurrection. He died for our sins. He was buried. He arose the third day. And once again, Acts 4.12, Neither under heaven is there given any other name whereby we must be saved. Oh, what a statement here. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Oh, the biggest mistake that you will ever make because it will determine your destiny. In Christ is heaven, out of Christ is hell. It's foolishness. You see, the purpose of the cross was to manifest the love of God. To show that he had no desire that the wicked die, but they come to repentance. Romans 5, 8. But God commandeth his love toward us and while we were yet sinners. Think about that. What greater proof do we need, ladies and gentlemen, that while we were yet sinners, the Bible tells us God commands his love toward us and he proved it. How? That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Because without the shedding of blood is no remission. And we see the the, the magnification of the grace of God. Oh, look at it. Romans 3, 24. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Oh, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Pause for a moment. Are you one who think the preaching of the cross is foolishness? Let me warn you, dear friend. You're sealing your destiny to a devil's hell by rejecting the cross of Jesus Christ. God has only one plan of salvation. It's in and through His Son. No other way. No other way. There's no way that you can obtain the righteousness that you need coming from the forgiveness you had to have by faith in Christ any other way it can't be obtained it can't there is absolutely totally and completely only one way to heaven jesus is the door that leads to heaven and the bible tells us that no other way is possible that was a type and shadow in the ark there was one door there was one window in that door, and the only way up was through Christ, which the ark is a type of. Oh, listen to me. Listen to me. We see the power of the cross in the fact that salvation is provided for lost humanity. Think about it. Romans 3, 26. To declare, I say it this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him, which believeth in Jesus. You see, there had to be a justification. Everybody has to have a sin debt paid. You will pay it foolishly and spend eternity in hell. Or you will accept the payment that God has so provided because of His love and His grace and because Christ endured the sufferings of the cross for the joy that was set before Him Improving His love. Improving His love. And the Bible tells us that very plainly. Because of that, 
Because of that, if you will accept Jesus Christ as personal Savior, God can grant you through Christ that righteousness that you're needed. Oh, listen to me. Don't be one that thinks the preaching of the cross is foolishness. It's sealing your soul to a devil's hell. Flee to the cross. Flee to the cross. He will not reject, reject anybody that comes by faith and accepts the finished work of Jesus. Oh, listen to me. The Bible <coughs> said that was the purpose that Christ came. Look at it. Look at it again in Philippians 2.8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. That's why Christ endured all that he did in order to achieve that which he could and does provide to you and I by faith. That's salvation. That's salvation. Our sins can be forgiven. He that says he hath no sins are a liar and the truth is not in him. But if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all sin. Oh, listen to me. That was and is the plan and the purpose of the cross of Calvary. Romans 3, 26. To declare... I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Oh, nothing could be plainer. Nothing could be plainer today, ladies and gentlemen. So I beseech you, I beg of you, do not look lightly upon the cross. Do not account the preaching of the cross as foolishness, for you're condemning your own self and forfeiting the greatest opportunity that you'll ever present in this life, and that's to come to the cross and accept the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and ask him to forgive you and save you, and the Bible says he will. Oh, I beseech you to consider that the price that Christ paid was the proof that he loves you. And as the result of the cross, we have victories that only God can provide to us through Christ. Number one, there's a victory over the law. Now there's nobody could keep the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments were given to show you and I our need. They were not sent to condemn us. We were condemned already in that we have not believed in the only begotten Son of God. But the Ten Commandments tells us why we or in the shape we are, we cannot fulfill the law of God in our human nature. But Christ came and fulfilled every point of the law. So the payment of the law was paid by Christ. And then there had to be a blood offering. Without the shedding of blood is no remission. Christ fulfilled that. He had the perfect blood that could be acceptable for the payment of sin. So the victory we have at the cross is that Christ fulfilled all that we need to be justified and born again. And the Bible tells us that, ladies and gentlemen, very plainly. Oh, listen to me. He said, Romans 8, 3. For what the law could not do, what could the law not do? It cannot save. It was not designed to save. It's a schoolmaster to bring us to the knowledge that we need to be saved. Look at it. And that it was weak through the flesh. There's no good thing dwells in the flesh that represents human nature. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. But Christ paid that debt of which we can't. Listen to me. There's victory and power over sin. You know, as an unsaved person, we have no means to overcome sin. An unsaved person is dominated by sin. 
There's no good thing that dwells in the human nature. But in Christ, in Christ, we have the power through the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to be able to have victory over the power of sin. Romans 6, 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, control of you, control of you. For you're not under the law, but under grace. Think about that. Think about that. Now you do not lose your sinful nature being born again. But that new nature, that new nature, that righteous nature that's been given to you by Christ has the power through the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to keep that sinful nature in remission. God says that. To whom you yield yourselves, servants ye are. Listen to me. And then, of course, the greatest victory in the cross is victory over death. You say the great enemy that man faces, or humanity faces, may I say, is death. It's appointed that a man wants to die, but after that, the judgment. That which Adam began, Christ corrects. Listen to me. Listen to me. Romans 6, 8, and 9. Look at it. Look at it. The Bible tells us that because Christ was victor over death, proven by the resurrection, he said in him we had that same power of being an overcomer in death. He became the first fruits, but in Christ he will have that same power to raise us on that day. Look at it. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death has no more dominion over him. But you say, preacher, we die. No, this body dies. We don't die. This body dies. For the believer to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. For the unbeliever to die is to be present in hell. In hell, lifting up his eyes, being in flames and in torments. You see, uh, some people, to the sadness of my heart, believe that when you die, that's all there is to it. But that's wrong. That's when it really begins. That's when eternity begins. Look at it. And then, of course, another great victory we have. The tormentor of us. The enemy of us. Satan. There's victory over Satan himself. Look at Revelation 20.10. And the devil that deceived them were cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Oh, he's tormented. Look at the pain and agony he has and is currently causing. But one day he will get his just reward. One day he will get his just reward. Oh, listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Please, please understand the foolishness of neglecting the cross. It has eternal consequences. It has consequences that will continue throughout all of eternity. And in hell being in flames and in torments. Oh, listen to me. There'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth in this darkness. Oh, listen to me. Do not, do not let people, do not let the devil, do not let anything keep you from understanding the power of God is in the cross. The cross, it's the only way to heaven. It's the only way. We must begin our journey at the cross by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ and the proof that it is is his resurrection. Oh, I beseech you, dear friend, if you're unsaved, you're unsaved. Think about what Jesus did to keep you from going to hell. 
being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He knew. He knew there was no other way. Because without shedding of blood, there's no remission. So therefore, he gladly, he gladly, despising the shame, endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. Oh, it was at the cross that the blood of Christ effected the plan and purpose of God was to save us, dear friend, who are lost. Oh, accept that gift. At the cross, the Savior bled and died. At the cross, the blood triumphs over the power of evil. At the cross is where I first saw the light. Revelation 13, 8, And all that dwell upon earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of the life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, what a thing. Come to the risen Christ of the cross and be washed in the blood for eternal salvation today. Father, help us. Help each and every individual that will partake of this message to understand. The power of God is in the cross. It's the plan and purpose that you've sent to us for salvation. And there's no other way. There's no other way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he's the only way. Help each and every one that's not saved to accept this message. And then, Father, we who are, we should praise you for the victory that we have in Christ. And the great enemy of death and the power of Satan have all been removed for of us. And we trust and pray now, Lord, that you'll bless this message. In your name I pray. Amen. God bless you. And may the Lord bless you.